happy birthday. Um, <laughs> so this year he started attending the middle school and high school group and he's having a blast. Um, and it's just fun to watch as parents too because they get to do so many fun things outside of the normal Sunday stuff. Um, you know, they've got, you know, t tonight they have game night, which he's really excited. That's why he's wearing his Rocket League t-shirt. Um, but, you know, he said he loves Sunday mornings because of the breakfast and the ping pong. <laughs> I think it's more than that, too. He said he really likes Drew. Um, and just, it's, it's great that he has a place, like middle school can be challenging and scary and new for all of us. And we just think it's awesome that he has Drew and his friends here to talk about real world issues and all the things. Um, and especially what we really love about Crossroads, it's always the underlying theme for us is the unlimited welcome, and we want our kids to know that and learn that. Um, and if you ask Lucy what her favorite part about coming to Crossroads is, she will say the donuts and the mints. Um, and I think she also, she really, really liked the Vacation Bible School, the singing and dancing, that was like a highlight for her. So um, me and Brian, we volunteer one time a month at least. We try to with the kids and student ministries. And, you know, it's fun being around our kids um, and learning. And we just want to set a good example for them and show them that it's good to volunteer. It's good to be active in your church. And it's just, it's good to be a part of something. We, we love it here. So. Thank you guys so much. So here's the deal, friends. People here in this church are super generous. And they give in incredibly generous ways, and that's how we can have such a great kids program and such a great student program. We're gonna invite you into a time of giving. And, and many people know that this is our time of our Christmas offering, where we give, and what our Christmas offering does is it really propels us into all the ways and all the things that we're gonna do over the next year. You have an envelope in your worship guide today. If you wanna use that, you can see there are lots of ways to give online, but I hope you'll give and give generously. Because things like our kids and student program mean the world, they transform kids' life. So as the ushers come around, you can put your connection cards in if you're in person, if you're online, you can do that all online, you can give online. But as you give, give generously and know that whether you're giving to the Christmas offering or the general offering, you're changing people's lives. Do, 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 do. 
there's this girl named Mary. She loved God and she loved to clean stuff up. But one day, an angel appeared. Mary was so surprised and kind of scared. But the angel said, don't be scared, you're going to have a baby. And then Mary said, how can I have a baby? I'm not married. But the angel said, it's all right. The baby will be God's son, Jesus. Mary was supposed to marry a guy named Joseph. She said to him, look, I'm going to have a baby. Joseph was pretty surprised, too, because he didn't know how to be a dad. But he wanted to take good care of the mom and the baby. Right before the baby was going to be born, Joseph and Mary had to go on a long trip to a town called Bethlehem. But it was okay, because Joseph made sure that Mary didn't have to walk by herself. But when they got to Bethlehem, it was so full of people. Nobody had roof on them. They tried one place. They didn't get other place. At the last place, the guy started to say no. Then he said, wait. I've got a place for you out back. But you got to be okay with animals. There weren't even any beds. But it was nice and warm. When Mary had Jesus, they wrapped him in cloth. And put him in the animal food dish. No one else knew about Jesus yet. But there were some shepherds just outside of town. And some angels showed up. The shepherds were like, oh no, what's happening? But the angel said, don't be scared. I have something really, really awesome to tell you. God's son Jesus has been born. He's in Bethlehem. He's all wrapped up in a blanket. The shepherds were super excited. So they got everyone together and ran to find Jesus. They were really glad when they found the right place. They were like, is this where Jesus is? And Mary let them come in. And they even got to hold and cuddle the baby. Sometime later, some kings were living far away from baby Jesus. But God sent them a special star. The kings followed the special star a long way. A really long way. A really, really long way. The star showed the kings right where Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus were. They even brought special presents for baby Jesus. Then everybody had a big party. Because they were so glad that God sent baby Jesus. That night was the best night ever. It was the best night ever. It was the best night ever! It was the best night ever. Wonder if you might pray with me and for me just a moment. Gracious God, I pray that the words that come out of my mouth might be honoring and pleasing to you. God, that somehow you might speak through me today. God, that you would give each of us ears to hear what you want us to hear. You'd open our minds to open understanding that our hearts be willing to be transformed. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So that video we just watched talked about two characters that are part of the Christmas story, Mary and Joseph. And the Bible uses this word to talk about Mary and Joseph. It's a word we don't use much today. 
The word is that they were betrothed. Right, it sounds like a funny word, right? Betrothed. What that meant was that they were all but officially, officially married. Right, they had done the legal stuff and they hadn't had the big ceremony with all their friends and all their neighbors, but they were gonna get married. I mean, let me tell you, they had done a lot of work, right? They had already gone to the not.com, right? I think we have their profile page there, right? That's their profile page at the not.com. They had hired the photographer. They had gotten uh, the their bridesmaids and, and got the bridesmaids dresses and, and Mary had gone cake tasting at all the different bakeries, right? Or maybe she asked her cousin to make the cake and Joseph had decided where they were gonna fly for their honeymoon, right? All right, so you may say none of these things really happened but the picture that I wanna give you is they were fully in. They were gonna do this thing. They were fully prepared to get married. Joseph was excited, he loved Mary. Mary loved Joseph. This was gonna be a good thing. And then it happened. Joseph gets the news that no almost husband wants to hear. Mary says, I'm pregnant. I'm having a baby. And as if she's going to start talking and say more and more, Joseph goes, stop. Just stop right there. I don't want to hear anymore. In fact, this is like the climax of a good Hallmark Christmas movie, right? It's the moment when it happens when you go, oh, it's all going south now. But you know in the end of a Hallmark movie, it always comes back around, right? So it's the climax of the movie right here, the moment where you go, what in the world is going to happen with these two people? At this point in time, the two major characters in the story have a problem. Now, here's the thing. In the first century, which was the time when Joseph and Mary lived, if you had a baby without being married, there were gonna be consequences. And the consequences were pretty big, right? Public humiliation, which meant that they were gonna put her in a place and make fun of her and say things about her and everybody was gonna know. And then according to the early parts of the Old Testament, Mary would be tried in court, and she could be hurt badly. Like, this was not gonna go well for her, this story wouldn't. What was Joseph gonna do? He gets this news, he hears this. What was he supposed to do? Because the law said that he had to do one thing. But how was Joseph gonna respond? Let's take a look at the gospel according to Matthew this morning in chapter one. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Now, can you imagine being Joseph in this story? Now, I know, because I know this church, some of y'all are gonna be frustrated with me that we're not talking about Mary. We're gonna get there next week. I'm gonna stick with Joseph today. Because what was Joseph to do? How was he to respond? I wanna look specifically at one verse in this passage that I think has a message for all of us today. It says, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. It says Joseph was faithful to the law. What does that mean? The law says that he had to respond. The law says that he had to turn her in. The law says that she was supposed to be in trouble. That's what Joseph had to do, right? That's the law. He was faithful to the law and he had to respond to that way, but Joseph didn't want that to happen. Joseph wasn't okay with that happening. 
See, Mary was supposed to, according to the law, have a mark put on her. Kids, do you ever have this happen at school? Right, where somebody puts a mark on you? Maybe you are not the fastest runner in class, and you're now labeled the slow kid, right? Because you don't run as fast. Maybe you're the kid that gets A's on everything, and you're labeled the smart kid. Or maybe one time, in a very, very bad moment, you accidentally picked your nose in school, and you became known as the nose picker, right? Because somebody saw it and they told other people. And for the rest of your year, everybody called you the nose picker, right? You had a big N that you wore around on your shirt every day, all the time. Because that's what was supposed to actually happen to Mary according to the law. The law said if she got pregnant and she wasn't married, that she was supposed to have this letter put on her. This thing that everybody knew that everybody could talk about. Mary would be forced to wear, in our illustration, the N. Right, she would be forced to wear that letter. According to society, this was all her fault. But here's Joseph's problem with the situation. Joseph has a big problem. You know what it is, guys? He loves her. He loves Mary. Joseph's problem is he loves her a lot, and he cares about her, and she matters to him. He can't stand to see her publicly humiliated. He can't stand to see her have this letter put on her that marks her as someone who's not worthy, that's not important, because he knows she's amazing. He knows she's a wonderful human. So he sets what many would call an appropriate boundary. Kids, do you know what a boundary is? Oh, yeah, okay, all right. So a boundary is when you say, here is how far I'm letting you come and you can't come any further. So Joseph sets a boundary. And the scripture says this, and yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace, so he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Right, he didn't want her to wear this big N on her shirt. He didn't want that to be the story for the rest of her life. So in his mind, he wanted to do the most gracious thing that he thought by the law he was allowed to do, and he would divorce her quietly and send her home. It was a small town, but maybe she could you know, be hidden, maybe the story wouldn't get out, maybe people wouldn't talk about it. Because he loved her, he didn't want to humiliate her. Now, I want to say a word that's important about boundaries. Many folks are about to spend time with family for Christmas, right? Whew. If my family's watching, this is not about you, right? But families can be challenging, right? Families can be difficult. And there are boundaries we can put in place with people in our lives. There are boundaries where we can say, I'm okay spending time with you, but I'm not okay with you coming this far. I'm not okay with you saying this to me. I'm not okay with you doing this to me. Kids, you can set boundaries with people in your classes. You can set boundaries and say, you're not really allowed to speak to me that way. So it's important to know that boundaries are okay, and it's very important to set boundaries. But I think Joseph's boundary that he's gonna set with Mary actually says a lot about him and actually teaches me a lot about how we can love people and how we can walk with people and interact with them. Think about this for a second. Joseph doesn't wanna hurt her. The fact of the matter is, friends, just because something is the truth or just because something is the rule doesn't mean that it's always helpful for someone. For example, if you wake up in the morning and you go in and talk to your sibling and their breath smells really, really bad, you have one of two options. You can say, hey, your breath really stinks, or you can back up a little, right? Backing up a little is setting a boundary, telling them it might be the truth, but it's not helpful, right? So much of things that we say that, but this is the truth, and we've got to get it to them, isn't helpful for other people. So I want you to think for a second about what we learn from Joseph. He's creating this boundary, and his boundary is to divorce her quietly, that's his first impulse. In fact, in his mind, because the Bible says that he's faithful to the law, it's the most generous thing that he can do. It's the most gracious thing that he can do. See, I think sometimes, and this is not me telling you to break the rules, but I think sometimes the way that we live into a rule says a lot about who we are that rules give us the capacity to be kind and to be generous and to show mercy and to show grace, and that's what Joseph wants to do. Now, we could argue that by Joseph not turning her in, he's being disobedient to the law, but here's how we know that's not true. 
Because look at what happens after this in the story. That's the beautiful part of this story. What happens next is the really great part, and it's the big surprise of the Christmas story. What happens next is amazing. At this moment where Joseph graciously and mercifully is disobedient, that's when it opens up the moment for God to come and speak to him. That's when it opens up the moment for the angel to come. Because friends, here's good news for you today. God doesn't go after perfect people. But what God does is God uses imperfect people to do really important and valuable things. And it is our humility that we walk into that, how we're humble, that allows God to use us the most. Angel comes to Joseph. It's a big surprise for him. And the angel has come to say, that woman who you decided not to have humiliated and hurt is actually carrying the son of God. Can you imagine what Joseph would have missed out on if he just turned her in? Can you imagine how he wouldn't have gotten to have been part of this super cool story that includes the birth of Jesus? But God uses him. And then another twist in the story, another surprise, Joseph makes a big decision. He decides to listen to God. Let's look at verses 24 and 25 again. It says, when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Now, here's the big twist in the story. When I read this recently, I said, oh, that's nice. Joseph decided to share in wearing this scarlet N, this letter, with Mary. But as I read the story more, what I've come to realize is he doesn't want her to wear it at all. He doesn't want to share it with her. He decides to just wear it himself. Joseph is putting himself in danger as he goes back into his community with this woman who's gonna have a child that isn't his. He decides that he wants to take that on. Why do I know this? The Bible never tells us that Mary gets publicly humiliated. The Bible doesn't tell us that she gets hurt. The Bible doesn't tell us that there was a trial. Friends, in this life, for people who call ourselves Christians, as we're trying to follow Jesus, we have lots of choices to make. And we have lots of choices to make about boundaries and how we live into boundaries. And what I wanna say is, boundaries are really important, and so is grace and mercy. Grace and mercy are really, really important. In fact, it is what God calls us to do. As we live in our relationships, grace and mercy are the things that we carry with us. So the question is not how do I follow all the rules and how do I follow the law exactly? The question is what is the right thing to do? And always, 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 mercy and graciousness is the right thing to do. Always. Last week we looked at the prophet Micah as we started to enter this season called Advent, which is this season that heads up to the time of Christmas. And, and, and Micah has this beautiful line in Micah 6, 8, where he asks the question, what does the Lord require of you? And he says, it's pretty simple. The Lord requires that we do justice, we love mercy, and we walk humbly with God. That we love mercy, that we love being gracious to people, even in the midst of setting boundaries, that we love caring for people, that we love walking with people, no matter what their story is and no matter what their background is. This is how Joseph lives his life. This is how he's portrayed in the book according to Matthew. Even in the midst of Christmas, friends, I think people forget about this. How when you go into stores, for those that don't just shop on Amazon, how when you go into stores can you show mercy and grace? How when your grandma who comes to your house and says really inappropriate things to you, how do you set up a boundary and show mercy and grace? How do you show mercy and grace to your neighbor? How do you show mercy and grace to your friends at school? How do you show mercy and grace to everyone that you walk with? And here's the thing, every story that we look at in the Bible of people who do great things, every person that God ends up using is a person who is humble and gracious. Because the truth is, in this story, Joseph could have looked at the angel and said, first of all, that was just a bad dream and I'm not doing it. 
Or Joseph could have looked at the angel and said, oh heck no, choose somebody else. I'm not doing this because it's too hard. And he doesn't. I wonder this Christmas how God is calling you to be humble and gracious. Each week we're trying to have some sort of reflection of surprise and we're gonna have communion in a little bit and you're gonna be able to come forward and when you come forward there's gonna be this little bag or a little card and the card says, how might God use you this season if you are humble and gracious? What if God is just waiting for you to be more humble? What if God is waiting for you to be more kind? What if God is waiting for you? So I hope you'll take this. I hope you'll put it somewhere in your life, in your bathroom, in your car. I hope you won't leave today without thinking of it, but I hope you'll take the time because this is what Jesus is all about. Jesus is not about going after people that have it all put together. Jesus is not about going after people because if you look at the Gospels, if you read how Jesus interacts with people, it's the people who think they have it all together that Jesus argues with the most. Jesus is about walking with people, imperfect people, who are willing to be humble enough to say, I want to do something powerful, something great. You know, we often talk about Mary and how Mary was such a good mother to Jesus, but I wonder how much of Jesus' earthly reality came from Joseph, his earthly father. Because we look at this story and Joseph is incredibly gracious. He's incredibly kind. How much of Jesus' nurture came from Joseph as he walked with him and as he journeyed with him as a father? Friends, too often we put big letters on people. We put big letters where we decide who they are and what their value is and what their worth is, and we name that. We might not consciously do it, but we put that big N on their shirt and we say, yeah, that's not my person. We make that decision about people, and this Christmas, I wanna invite you to remove those letters, to take them off of people, these, these categories that you've put people in. Now again, I don't say get rid of boundaries. Boundaries are important, Jesus set them. But as you deal with boundaries, deal with them in a way that is gracious and humble. I encourage you over the next few weeks to be open how God might use you in a really powerful and beautiful way. Think about it. If the hundreds of people that are in this room and online today went out this December and said, this December, I'm gonna allow the angel of the Lord to speak to me, and then I'm gonna say yes, how might the world be changed? How might we surprise the world together? Friends, each week at Crossroads, we have the opportunity to receive communion together, and all are welcome. This is God's table. It's not my table. Um, There's nothing you can do that can earn coming here and there's nothing you can do that can keep you away. But I want you to know that all can receive today. What happens here is the ushers will let you know when to come forward. There'll be four stations, five stations up here. There'll be a gluten-free option in the middle or there'll be a prepackaged gluten-free option at every station. If you prefer not to take bread and juice, you can take one of the prepackaged options and that can go back to your seat with you as well. When you come forward, You can pick up one of these, which has the question in it. You can also, over here in the corner, we have a prayer tree. And this is a tree where you can write a prayer and hang it on there. And on Christmas Eve, we're gonna have people take all those prayers home and pray over them and pray for each thing that's up there. So you can do that after worship if you're on this side or if you're walking on this side, you can do that now. But friends, the big thing I wanna say, and I know it's interesting with communion at Christmas, right, as we're about to celebrate the birth of Christ, but what I wanna say is this table is for all. There is so much grace and mercy. It doesn't matter how old you are and it doesn't matter what your story is. You can come to this table. On the night in which Christ gave himself up for us, he took bread as he sat around the table with the disciples, these people who he had done life with, imperfect people who other people had rejected, who he chose to walk with and show grace and mercy. He took bread, which was a common food, and he gave thanks to God and then he broke the bread. And he gave it to those disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. As often as you eat bread, think of me. Let that be something that propels you and walks with you. And when the supper was over, he took the cup and he poured into the cup and then he gave thanks to God. 
and he gave it to those disciples and he said, hey, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new promise poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink from the cup, Jesus said, remember me. Let's pray. Pour out your Holy Spirit, O oh God, on all of us that are here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might go out into the world to share the light of Christ, recognizing that Christ goes with us. By your Holy Spirit, make us one. One with each other. One in mission to love and to care for the world. One as we seek to show mercy and kindness and graciousness. And one as we seek to not only be surprised by you, but also to surprise the world. Come Holy Spirit and meet us here, amen. I'm gonna invite all of those who are serving to come forward. As they come forward, just know the ushers will direct you when the time comes and all are welcome to receive. Jesus Christ, our Savior, was born on Christmas Day to save us all from Satan's power.
friends, what a gift it has been to worship with you today. And think, we still have a few more weeks before Christmas. So there's a lot going on, which we're super excited about. What? Right? After worship today, I want to encourage you to do a couple of things. One is if you want to change kids' lives at Christmas, go out to our Bells and Lights table and our School Break Bundles table. If you took a gift card last week to get a gift, please make sure that gift is back by next week because it's gonna change people's lives this Christmas. And if you're here, if you're gonna stay after for the cocoa and cookies and brunch with Santa, just go out this door, go down the sidewalk and go in the next door and they'll do it. But friends, the biggest challenge, show grace and mercy. And let that be what drives you as you head into this Christmas, amen?